Hello everyone, welcome to This Week in TRS-80 for the 17th of May 2019. If you've got any questions and you want them answered in the form of a video uh, about the TRS-80 or Tandy computers, uh, send them through to me. My email address is enm at trs-80.com and uh, the best questions that come through, I'll answer them uh, in the form of a video. So today's questions, uh, I've got four of them. The first one's come through from John from South Carolina. He asks, why don't I do more of these videos? Because they come out fairly infrequently. Uh, the reason for that is that um, I need people to send me questions. And the more questions I get, the more often I can then uh, go and make one of these videos. So uh, if you've got a question, email it to me and the best ones get put into, uh, into a video. If I don't make a video for a while, it just means that not many people have been sending questions that uh, are suitable for this format. Okay, the next uh, question comes from Jeff in Arizona. He asks if you can use Model 4 keycaps on a Model 1 keyboard. Uh, the answer to that is yes, you can, as long as um, certain criteria are met. So the first one is that the keycaps have to be from a Model 4 with an ALPS keyboard. So not the Model 4 membrane keyboard and not the Model 4 maxi switch keyboard. And the Model 1 has to have an ALPS keyboard on it, not the original key bounce keyboard. My own Model 1, which I'll just show you, is one that I've done previously with Model 4 keycaps. There, the white keys are from a Model 4. So they do fit. Some people ask me why I did that. I have a lot of these and this is my main unit. I don't want to mix it up so it sticks out like uh, a sore thumb because it's got white keys on it so I'm unlikely to misplace it or accidentally sell it to someone. Okay, um, next, key, next question comes from William in California. Has a question about the keyboard connector that William's talking about. So here's an Alps keyboard and it has a short, normally has a short white connector which over time um, splits apart. It's made of cheap plastic and uh, it doesn't last 40 years. It was never designed to last 40 years. Uh, there's a few things you can do. What the previous owner of this computer has done is just got some ribbon cable, tinned all 20 ends here, tinned the other 20 ends uh, there and soldered it. It's a lot of work, and um, but that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is using a strip pin header. Uh, you replace this connector here with a pin header. The one on the motherboard, you also replace it. And you um, then run uh, just an IDE cable from a regular modern day hard drive. Um, and that will solve the problem. Uh, the other one, that uh, for people who like things to be kept neat, I've got these available now. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Um, that will uh, join them together with a high quality uh, plastic cable. Um, and uh, you just clean out the, the holes of the old cable, solder this in and onto the motherboard between them, and you'll uh, have solve your keyboard problem. So if people are after these uh, keyboard connectors, uh, they should drop me a line. Okay, and last question comes from Neil in Canada. He's asking how to fix a Coco RS232 pack. So I've got one here, which I'll show you what it comprises of. So the one he's talking about is this one here. I've taken the screw out and unclipped it. So inside one of these is a, uh, that one there is a 6551 uh, serial interface adapter. I suppose you'd call it a UART on, on other types of, um, of uh, serial ports. That's the main one that does the work. Fortunately it's socketed so if, uh, if that fails you can just replace it. There's also on this a 1488 line driver and a 1489 line driver which are soldered in. If you make a wrong, if you make a cable wrong, or it sends a shock wave, some uh, down the RS232 line, it will often blow one or both of those um, those line driver chips. So they need to be replaced, and that will usually fix that. 
these RS232s have the traditional Tandy solder covered connector so they need to be cleaned regularly and will give unpredictable results on the computer if they uh, if they are dirty so um, you might find if your RS232 is running poorly it might just need to have the connector clean. For people who don't have a serial port RS232 serial port I've started to make these now this is a modern reproduction of it it has a, a few improvements that um, are uh, needed, sorely needed in the in the um, Coco world. It has gold-plated connectors on it. If you can see that, so reliability, no more oxidization of the connector. It has a um, R, a Rockwell R6551 uh, serial interface adapter. It has two seven six four compatible EEPROM chip that's socketed, so you can change it for your own program, like a drive wire or something. And the um, the line drivers, the 1488 and 89, are socketed on this thing. So if you blow them, it takes you know a couple of minutes to change them over and get back up and running. So if people are after one of these, they should get in touch with me. So that's it for another episode of this week in TRS80. If you've got questions, email them through, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to know when my email when my videos come out, don't forget to ring the bell.